G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go, I've been away on holidays, I'm now back uh, and I've got some footage that I recorded actually when I was on holidays. I had access to a PlayStation, had access to Gran Turismo Sport and my account, so I decided to give it a go. The one thing I did not have access to uh, was my wheel, so this whole video today, all the footage you see uh, was done on controller. Uh, back on the controller, right back to the roots of uh, my videos, the first good chunk of my videos were all done on controller because I didn't own a wheel. I now own a wheel but obviously didn't bring it with me on holiday so uh, I didn't have it. But I felt kind of okay at this combination on controller actually. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> it was kind of weird because I felt as though... Um, I don't want to say it was easier on controller, but uh, it felt pretty easy uh, considering that it was controller and I hadn't used it for ages, but uh, this is a couple of qualifying laps. Now, the race that I'm going to show you after was actually done before this qualifying lap. Um, the qualifying lap basically put me on pole position for every race, so I kind of just led from the front. Um, but I did have one race with my not-so-great qualifying time, we'll see that later, but I am going to show you uh, my uh, good qualifying time, my fastest lap of the week, just to give you an idea of the references that I looked out for during the race. Um, but as we come through the final turn now, onto the main straight of Alsace Village here, looking on the left-hand side, is a 50-metre board breaking just before it, down into second gear, touch the kerb on the inside very gently on the power, uphill, exit to that corner so it can oversteer very easily uh, but we get through there nicely coming up through turn two flat out in this car um, you can understeer off so just be careful looking on the left hand side just on the start of the arrows pointing towards the inside of turn three second gear gently on the exit as it drops away you can oversteer again and then turn four is a lift off looking around the corner once you pass that big tree on the apex full power to the exit Lovely, and coming into turn five now, breaking just before the start of the curb. It's third gear, it bogs down a little bit, but it's faster than doing second and then a gear change. And then easy flat through turn six. Turn seven, looking on the right hand side, just to the start of the arrows again. Third gear here, uh, trend it to the apex, get it out towards the exit, get through there nicely. Turn eight, turning in just after the 50 meter board and lift off, and then once the curb on the right ends, Full on the power, you get through there, through there nicely. Turn 9 is flat. Uh, and turn 10 is the entry to turn 11, breaking just before uh, the apex of turn 10 for turn 11. Second gear, nice and slow through there. Gently on the power, don't get too much oversteer. And then uh, turn 12 is just a lift off, no brakes. You can get a lot closer to the apex. I actually lose quite a bit of time uh, there. 13 and 14, easy flat down this straight and breaking just before the start of the curb on the left. Chuck it in. Turn 15, turn 16, dab the brakes, get it in there, and then turn 17 is just this little right-hander out onto the straight here. That is a 137.5, which is actually not too bad. Um, you know, I probably could have gone a bit faster if I had the wheel, but uh, that is the lap time I achieved on controller, and I felt as though I was pretty under control, uh, no pun intended. But we're going to go into the race. Now, this was set much earlier in the week, my lap time... Qualifying time wasn't that great. Uh, we'll see it shortly. Uh, there it is there, 139.0. So I've gone quite a significant chunk faster than this. Uh, this was, I think this was like the first or second race that I did. Um, probably the second because my ratings weren't that great. Uh, um, shown by the strength of the lobby there. Uh, but we start on this race here in fourth position. We've got a nice gap behind. We're just going to get into the slipstream of Eddie. And now turn one, this is daily race C, so we have fuel use and tyre wear, so the tyres are going to be cold. Um, when tyre wear is turned on, tyre temperatures are simulated, um, as that's not the case for race B or in, in, uh, in cases where there's no tyre wear. Coming into turn three, you can see Nick Wound Steel is very wide there, and we almost get past him. We just have to give him room on the exit, and it hampers our exit there, and we're not able to get past to go for a little bit of a switchback going through turn four, but I just make slight contact with the back of him. Not ideal there. Coming into turn five, uh, not much to report of, except for a little bit of a nudge off the track there. That's Merchant of Death completely just nudges me off the track. I was well within my right to do what I did and he just drove me out. 
down into seventh, get passed by the Mazda 787B, driven by uh, May, a lot of sixes and a five um, around turn eight. I'm going to have dirty tyres as well, so it's really painful waiting to get onto the power there. And you can see I almost understeer completely off the track, and I just have to react in time. Mazda 787B goes completely off the track up ahead of me into the braking zone for turn 11. Look how much ground we catch up to the Mazda there, who just touches the inside of the kerb at turn 11. You don't want to do that. Uh, and we're going to be in the slipstream coming up uh, the back straight. Ditch con that actually contains two corners, so is it a straight? You tell me. Give him a little bit of a flash here. Let's see if we can put him off in his braking. And uh, it does, actually. <laughs> Completely bins it. Uh, that's no good. Uh, not ideal. Um, so that's not the correct strategy for this race, which is a no-stop. So you don't want to be stopping at any point, whether it be in the pit lane or in the barrier. Um... <laughs> But that's no good. Up into six at this point here, which is good for our race. We don't have to worry about the dirty air uh, the, for a little bit here until we catch up to the cars up ahead. So this race is kind of a race of recovery. I've left the whole thing in unedited, so you can kind of see uh, the ebbs and flows and the story of this race. You can see we go for a very late apex and get a nice exit there. Uh, this car's a lot of downforce, so it sticks quite well on the exit of corners. Once you're in third gear, um, you probably can oversteer if you're turning too much, but it's fairly stable. I mean, I was on controller, and I'm keeping quite well, uh, keeping control of the car quite well. But as we're coming through this lap, we're definitely getting closer to fifth place here. So um, we're going to be getting the slipstream effects shortly, but that does mean dirty air effects through the corner, which is absolutely horrendous in these Group C cars here. Of course, is it to Group One? Uh, combination but we were provided only the Group C cars. Uh, we'll talk about which car, we'll talk about why we're using this car in particular a little bit later as a couple of people up ahead get a penalty including Merchant of Death so as far as I'm considered, uh, as far as I'm concerned sorry, uh, that is karma from washing me off the track. Uh, thank you very much for that, I can guarantee if I did that to him he would probably blow up about it uh, but we're just going to show our hand by just trying to finish ahead of him. I think that's the, that's honestly the best way uh, to show someone up. If they push you off track, if you can still finish ahead of them even though you were punted off, that really goes to show uh, who's the better driver of the two. Looking around the outside of Maspie, not the place to be, Turn 1. So we've discussed uh, Alsace Village before as the two cars up ahead serve their penalty. So yes, we have discussed about this track before and it's actually very, it's actually quite difficult to overtake because the corners are so strange and the, uh, it undulates so much uh, as we almost get spun out once again by Merchant of Death. He, got to, he gets himself a one second penalty. That is an absolutely deserved penalty. So he's pushed me wide and nearly spun me out. I was taking the correct line for that corner. You do come in for a very late apex. You can get a straight exit, um, especially in these cars that like to oversteer. Uh, but he decided to really hug the inside, and you can see that I actually make that mistake. That's completely my mistake there, running deep. Anyway, as I was discussing before, yes, the track is very weird. The corners undulate, so when you're offline, it's very difficult to get the power down. Uh, obviously, if you're overtaking someone that's taken the racing line, you are offline by definition, uh, making it very difficult to complete the overtake because you can't get the grip or the grunt or the braking or whatever it is, the line to get that overtake complete. So we're basically relying on mistakes. I mean, it is possible to overtake, it's just difficult to, um, but we've got to try and uh, keep level head and just get the moves done when they're on. Like, don't try to force a move because you'll probably just crash. Another thing, as we've seen a couple of times here, the penalty system is absolutely atrocious. If you go for a dive at turn 15, not got to come off there. Dr. Goes Pro actually keeps a position there, which is good because that was my fault and I don't get a penalty, neither does he. That's actually extremely lucky. So if you haven't heard recently, the penalty system is absolutely awful at the moment. It's about the worst it's ever been. In fact, so bad that one step better would be no penalty system at all and everyone just gets away with all contact rather than penalising any contact at all, which obviously isn't right. Um, we've all heard the phrase, rubbing is racing, there's going to be contact. I oh, know it's a non-contact sport, but it's gonna happen. 
uh, whether it be just a slight tap, just like there on the back of Merchant of Death. Did any of us get a penalty for that? I can't believe I'm actually asking that question, considering how that contact looked. No, I think it's okay at the moment. So I believe the way the penalty system is working at the moment, if there's contact and somebody loses a position, the other car gets a penalty. Whether the position is a change between the two of you, or whether the, um, you both slowed up and someone else drives past, um, that is considered a loss of position, and whoever is deemed at fault of the contact will get a penalty. Uh, not the correct way to go about it, of course. You have to consider the individual information, but um, that is what we have to go with at the moment. So it's just best to try and avoid all contact at all costs. That's what we're going to try and do here, is we're stuck behind Merchant Death a little bit, um, but let's try and get past him cleanly. Let's show him how it's done. It's obviously not done by running him completely off the track on the exit of a corner. Uh, that's definitely not the way it's done. So we're just going to try set him up for a move. I'm going to flash the headlights a bit here. So it's very easy to flash the headlights when you're using a controller because you just push down on the, th on the left thumbstick, which you've got your thumb on anyway because that's what you're steering with. Very easy to flash your lights. You can even do it accidentally if you steer too aggressively and accidentally press down on the thumbstick. Um, but uh, as seen with the move on the Mazda 787B earlier in the race, uh, a bit of a flash of the headlights can just divert their attention behind a little bit too much and then they can, uh, can cause a crash. Um, my defense, of course, is I accidentally pressed the button. I know. <laughs> Some people don't really like the headlight flashing, but, uh, whoops. You know, don't, don't shoot me. Um, but let's just focus back to the race now. Merchant of Death has caught out a little bit of a gap. It was just on the brink of Slipstream, actually. Seven tenths. Slipstream is seven and a half tenths, so you're looking on the left-hand side of your screen. The gaps in between the cars, the black numbers or the red number, I guess, uh, 0.750 is what you're looking for slipstream you can probably uh, you can gain quite a bit actually in slipstream especially on a track with a lot of straights this track has a lot of corners so slipstream isn't that you know it's not that helpful because it just translates into dirty air and considering these group C cars uh, have a lot of dirty air or have a lot of um, downforce sorry uh, they do feel the effects of dirty air quite severely. You can see even just into the braking zone there, I run deep. Uh, as we get further and further into the slipstream of Merchant of Death here, you can see we're about six tenths behind as we exit out onto the back straight, up over the crest of the hill and plunging down towards the braking zone of turn 15. In the slipstream of Merchant of Death, we're going to have to brake nice and early. We run slightly deep. You kind of, when you're going through this last chicane uh, section, you don't really want to go across the dividing line in the road uh, that will signify you've gone too deep we go for the move up the inside of turn one he leaves the door open nice and uh, nice and wide nice wide track door was left open he ran wide as you can see he's flashed me a little bit uh, he's probably just returning my flashes I wouldn't consider uh, that to be a flash in anger as I don't really understand why that would be the case considering how clean that move was you can see he runs deep into the next corner having not had slipstream for a while he's obviously broken in the same spot as usual but as soon as he's gotten into my slipstream that means he has run deep and you can see he's dropped right off out of slipstream range already side by side up ahead and also another penalty up ahead we're gonna be fighting for this podium paying position of third which we can see the leaders have bolted around the corner they're over 12 seconds ahead at this point here uh, so that is not good in terms of a first or second which we could make a complete hash of turn seven just get that inside tire caught on the outside of the curb uh, not where you want to be and it just kind of makes the car very unstable and you can't get on the power so the car we've just we've, we've talked about the car a lot but we don't actually know what the car is the Mercedes Sauber C9 was the best car for this week so that's the one I went with um, Group C Monster, the same car we use in the Lewis Hamilton DLC uh, hot lap at Nordschleife where we got to beat Mr. Hamilton, uh, it was done in this car. Um, we are using BOP here of course. Um, so all the Group C cars are specially provided, you can use any Group C car you like. Um, uh, because it was specially provided there's no liveries so we're all using the livery here. Uh, but you can see that Dr. Ghost Pro gets a portion of oversteer on the main straight and just Shepard's Maspie off the track there, uh, which um, allows me to get past him, so we don't have to worry about that. Maspie will be serving a penalty uh, on this round, or this lap here, a uh, one second penalty, and uh, we were going to get past him anyway, but obviously we don't, you know, obviously we don't want to see contact like that, but uh, Dr. Ghost Pro, 
considers that it was fine and keeps the position himself, so that's his own prerogative, whether I agree with that or not, is another question, but we're just going to focus on trying to raise Dr. Go Dr. Ghost here as I almost trip on my words. So we're in the slipstream, we're in the dirty air of course, um, turn five has become a second gear corner now that we've got tyre wear factored in, so you can see down in the bottom left uh, the tyre wear indicators, they've got hardly any tyre wear at all, and fuel we've only used about 75 or maybe 73% of, uh, we've got, sorry, we've used probably 27% of fuel, we've probably got about 73% remaining, and we're on lap 7 and 10, so there's absolutely no risk of running out, the tyres aren't that bad, you can kind of keep similar pace throughout the whole race, because as the tyres wear, the car gets lighter with the fuel use, so they kind of balance out, you can run the same pace at the start as you can at the end, which is a very interesting dynamic, so it's basically a race B except in race C, but the car's, the car's performance changes a bit. Um, it's a bit weird, but we'll go on with it anyway. Uh, coming on to lap 8 now, we've caught right up to the back of Dr. Ghost here. Um, so we are going to be in his slipstream for turn 1. Basically, if he runs deep, we could go for the move. He breaks a little bit early. I look up the inside at turn 1 there, a little bit of contact between us. Uh, but I think that was just about okay there. Uh, no penalties between us. He's only right behind me. So he's got an uh, a opportunity for an instant reply. Up the inside of turn 2, a little bit of contact on the way through. And I just let him pass there. Um, so we were up in third. Briefly, he runs quite wide on the exit of turn three there. And look how close we are behind. We're going to be getting absolute masses of dirty air as he just touches the inside and gets the car on a bit of a wiggle. Uh, but we manage to keep right behind him into the braking zone for turn five. I choose third gear this time. Look how much he stretches out on the exit there. Uh, but he probably will have a gear change to do and yes he does so he he lost about a tenth there uh, I stayed in third he probably went into second as he got a massive massively amazing launch out of that corner um, but that is the difference between second or third I feel like as the race goes on with tie wear you're probably uh, going to end up in second gear more than you are in third which you would be in qualifying uh, but into the slipstream again turn 10 turn 11 looking up the inside a little bit of contact there, probably uh, not gonna work, I just uh, inhibit myself getting on the power and try to go for the move uh, up the inside of turn 12, not the place to be, third gear, I actually get the launch but it just runs me wide there and I'll make contact with the barrier. Thankfully no penalties for either of us, I want this amazing race to continue. As we go into the second to last lap here, you can see I made a mistake through turn 16. Look how much he gains there. I'm out of the slipstream range here and Maspie has, has dropped off majorly, he's four and a half seconds behind. Uh, the car slides into turn one, that's Ty Ware coming in there and we make a little bit of a hash of turn one actually. Right, so we've just got to get our heads down, we've got to try and catch back up to Dr. Ghost here, we can't let him get away, um, but I am, I, I, I think I was str struggling a little bit on controller towards the end of the race, because as the tyre wear kicks in, the car becomes more difficult to control, so your hands sort of fatigue, it makes, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, it just makes con using the controller a lot harder uh, as you're furiously in a battle. Uh, the car's also a lot more pointy on controller because you move the stick and the front wheels instantly turn, whereas on the wheel you can be progressive, you can be smooth, and you can just turn a little bit. On, on controller you kind of turn the car, just jolts left or jolts right. It's kind of a very different way to race. It definitely feels more arcadey on controller, but as soon as you go into that wheel, you start to get the more into the more sim, sim race elements of the game. Coming into turn 11, we almost made contact with the back of him there, that was just purely breaking too late and we get a massive kick of oversteer and the exit of turn 11 there, so the tyres have dropped off quite a bit by this point. So you can see the tyre wear indicators don't look that bad, uh, but the car felt a lot more understeering, the braking wasn't great, it was understeery and oversteery, uh, mind you, both and the braking wasn't great and it was harder to get traction on the exit of corners. Dr. Ghost progress a little bit of oversteer coming out of turn 16, almost ends up off the track, uh, but he still remains about a second ahead of me at this point. This is going to have to be a bloody good final lap if I'm going to be able to get this third position, but that's not how we do it, by getting oversteer on the exit of turn 1. I think my tyres are gone at this point, and I don't know if there's going to be a real chance of this. 
So that's another thing, controller versus wheel. Controller, you end up wearing your tyres out a lot more because uh, on a wheel you can feel the grip on with the feedback. On a controller, you don't. So you're just turning, and you, I think you end up making more movements in the car on controller because of the stick and the, how sensitive the steering can be. So you turn a little bit, you might have to counter steer or turn back, turn in again. Whereas on a wheel, once again, you can just be smooth and progressive. You can hear the tyres and feel the understeer or the oversteer and just adjust accordingly and you end up um, a lot more smooth on your tyres. Dr. Ghost runs very wide through turn seven there. It gives us a little bit of an opportunity to get, to get back into the slipstream as we pass the back marker here as we run a little bit wide through turn eight, if you ask me, and you can see Dr. Ghost has just caught out that second gap once again. So I think the tyres have gone off it's going to be quite a tall order to try and get this um, uh, third position. I get it pulled up nicely for turn 11 actually and we just end up in the slipstream momentarily but we get a very poor exit from turn 11 and we run very wide through turn 12. Almost completely off the track, almost spin out. That's, that's the end of it. It's going to be a fourth position as long as you don't crash through the final chicane. We shouldn't do it. We've done it nine times previously. Uh, successfully navigated successfully and we've done it for a tenth as long as you can get onto the power and not crash into that barrier in turn 17 come across the line it's a fourth so not too bad I definitely think third was on uh, but we, wa we weren't quite able to hold it um, we weren't yeah we weren't quite able to get past Dr. Ghost there we did momentarily but he re overtook us and then we just dropped off but that race was okay, actually. That was about the best race I did. Obviously, it was on holidays, so I didn't do that many races. But I probably did four or five, and that was the race with the most action. The rest were literally just leading from the front. Um, so that's all I've got. I just thought it'd be interesting to have a look at the controller race and coming back through the pack after um, being pushed off. But that's all this one was today. Do hit that like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Uh, leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.